Within Six Sigma, your Sigma level and your CPK or process capability, they are directly linked. They, they basically use the same type of formula. So let's dive in and see how to translate between the two of them. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's topic is Six Sigma or the Sigma level of your processes and how this compares to the CPK or process capability of your processes. And for that, let's first check a bit what is this sigma, which is standard deviation level, how to check it, how is the formula for CPK. And I think that when we go through it, you will already see the link between them. Now, first off, we have a product with a certain parameter where it can score low or high, and it should fall between our specification limits. So for this parameter, we have a lower specification limit. Our product should not be lower than that. Then we have a defect and an upper specification limit. If it goes over this limit, we also have a defect. So basically any product that falls between your lower and upper specifications is a good product. Now, most of our product we see here in this bell curve, which is a histogram of our production. Most of our products, they are roughly here. And in fact, the mean of our production is over there. But we also, of course, have some natural variation in our process. So we'll have a couple of products that are a bit bigger or a bit smaller. And the further you go away from the mean, the fewer products you will see. So a little bit away from the mean, a bit bigger, for instance, we still have quite a lot of products. But when we get somewhere here, there's almost no product anymore that is so much bigger than our mean. Now, an important assumption within Six Sigma is that most processes will behave normally. And normally here is a statistical term. So that means that you have some natural variation or a number of different variations that are added together. And what we then see happening is that you get this type of distribution. So you know that um, your process will be more or less centered around the mean and that you get specific percentages when you go further from the mean. This is one of the tests that you should always do before using statistics that rely on normality. This thing looks more or less normal when you have an extra thing here that is not normally distributed. If you see this happening, do not use any of these statistics anymore because they will give you wrong conclusions. But apart from that little sidestep, let's check what usually happens. So what happens in a normal distribution is that roughly the end of the curve, so to say, because it does fit over 99% of your values. Here, we say this is three standard deviations and a standard deviation is also known as sigma. And we can split it up a bit further. So what we see is we have our average or our mean line, and we have a number of standard deviations, and I drew them now here as lines. What we say is about two thirds of our values, they fall between plus and minus one standard deviation, about 95% plus and minus two, a good 99% plus and minus three. And what you are actually going for in Six Sigma is something that this process doesn't have. And that is that you have six standard deviations between the mean and your specification limits. Because this process on the lower specification limit side has got six standard deviations, but on the upper specification limit, six is well, beyond the specification, it, it reaches about four standard deviations within our specification, in this uh, case, the upper specification limit. Now, this is also the input for our CPK formula. This is the CPK formula where we check the minimum of these two. So let's explain those first. So either the mean minus the lower specification limit, this part here, or the upper specification limit minus the mean, so this part here. And we choose 
the lowest of these two, the minimum of these two. And this is just a mathematical way of saying, where is our mean? Is it closer to the upper or closer to the lower specification limit? And in our case, it will be closer to the upper limit because as we said, this one here was six standard deviations. And it's a bit, we should put some numbers here maybe, but you will see why I'm sort of cheating now here. So we have six standard deviations, whatever the standard deviation is. And here we have four standard deviations. So that one there is the lowest, the minimum. And we divide it by three standard deviations. So in our example, what we get, so I had to correct it a little bit because of course we divide four sigma by three sigma and that makes 1.33. And 1.33 is a number that you will get then as a CPK. And here, uh, when we are talking about CPK, uh, you can give yourself the targets, definitely, but we'll also often see them within industry, uh, especially between companies. The purchasing company, they put a specific CPK demand on the supplier company. How good should their processes and especially their products be? So uh, they, for instance, want you to deliver a widget that is between 8.1 and 8.3 millimeters wide with a CPK of 1.67. Now, our process only gets a CPK level of 1.33. This is the same as four sigma, because this one here, the three sigma, it never changes in this formula. This is a given. So when we calculate, and usually you will calculate the actual values that were here. So uh, this might be five and, and this might be 12. And then we take that difference and the sigma will also be the standard deviation that we have here, which might be two, for instance. Uh, but when you already check how many sigmas you are away from the limit, you will see how these two are completely linked. So how the sigma level is completely linked with CPK. And basically it, it goes like this and we'll put them down. Basically a CPK of one is three sigmas between the limit and the mean, 1.3, 1.67, and a CPK of two is six sigma. So when we are talking about a six sigma process, it is the same as a CPK of two. That's also why in industry, you will not see many companies, luckily uh, for now, because not all our processes are that well, really asking for this CPK of two. Many customer companies are asking for one of these two. So either four or five sigmas away from the specification limits on both sides. That has to do with uh, most of our products fall within three sigma. So you would say, well, why not CPK of one? Yes, but we also know that to really keep this whole production centered very nicely where we have it right now, that is, well, it's difficult. So um, you have to notice when there is a shift in your process and generally, maybe not over days, but at least over the short run, you only notice such a shift in your process when your whole process has shifted one, one and a half sigma. And that's why companies like to be somewhere around here. So CPK of one and a half would be exactly that level, 1.3, 1.7. These are levels where you can more or less guarantee that you will always be delivering products within specifications. And that is why companies ask for it. But as you see, the Sigma level, the CPK, it has a slightly different unit of measurement, but they are just the same. In fact, they will continue also. A CPK of four would be 12 Sigma. So these scale linearly. And once you know what the conversion rate is, which is this free, you also know how to compare between those numbers. Now, I hope you liked this small explanation of CPK, Sigma level, how to convert between the two. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, drop me a comment 
If you would like me to explain any of the other terms that we use within performance excellence, continuous improvement, lean, TPM, Six Sigma, all of the things where you think, oh, somewhere it was in the exam or maybe in the books, but I didn't get the meaning. Please don't explain it to me. I'll be happy to do that for you. Drop a comment. I'll make a video about it. For now, I wish you the best of luck in your Six Sigma journey. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the improvement journey.